Hello and welcome to another day of Advent of Code Solutions. Uh, this is day six, which is the first day that <laughs> the brute force solution doesn't really work. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, how you could do the brute force solution, but then how to think about how to optimize the faster solution. Um, anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so the problem that we're dealing today our input is a series of numbers, and those numbers represent fish in a particular state. Um, you can kind of think of it as like a breeding counter. And when a fish is at zero, it gets reset to a breeding counter of six, and it generates a new fish that has a breeding counter of eight. And those decrease at each day. And so basically we're gonna simulate a bunch of days and for part one, we're gonna simulate 80 days. And then after those 80 days have elapsed, the answer is the total number of fish. Uh, so you start with you know, some input string like this, uh, and after each day, you decrease each of these numbers, and when they are zeros, they wrap around, and they generate a fish. Um, and so you, you could, um, you can simulate this, and it's, it's actually fast enough for part one to just simulate it directly, so. Let's say we, I'm just going to show you what a manual solution would look like, and then we're, we're not going to actually use that, but we're going to uh, kind of show you how you can think about it from there. Um, so I'm actually going to <laughs> abuse a walrus so that it will do the assignment and print it in the same time. So I can just press up, enter, up, enter a bunch of times. Um, but we're basically going to do for n in n's. Uh, we want to subtract one and wrap around, and we can simulate that by using mod seven, because uh, negative one mod seven actually does wrap around for you, which is kind of nice. And so that's gonna handle all of the numbers that currently exist, so that's gonna subtract one from each of these. And then we need to add on however many eights, and the number of eights here are any of the ones that were zeros in the previous generation, so we can just count the number of zeros. Eight times ns.count zero, uh, and that will give us our next generation. I think this is right. Yeah, so you can see three went to two, four went to three, etc. cetera. Uh, and then in the next generation, this zero is gonna become a six and we're gonna get another eight there. So if we rerun this here, uh, the zero became a six and we got an eight. And this zero is gonna generate an eight also. Um, and you can you know, rerun this, et cetera, et cetera. And you can actually run this enough times. If you run this 80 times, you will end up with uh, the answer for part one. However, for part two, it has to do it 256 times. And you'll notice this number is very, very large. Uh, it is 26 billion. And iterating over 26 billion numbers, just doing that alone is going to take, you know, several minutes to iterate. And so you can imagine, you can imagine that with a larger data set and with a larger set of numbers, that's really going to run forever. So we have to come up with a smarter thought here. And um, I'm gonna kind of walk you through how I inferenced this and then show you how I implemented it uh, because this, this is clearly not gonna cut it. Um, the cool thing that I noticed here is if we look at these numbers here, uh, you'll notice that these numbers are very similar to these numbers except they have just been dropped by one. So uh, in the first iteration, we just decreased everything by one. So the, the number of threes became the number of twos. And the number of fours became the number of threes. The number of ones became the number of zeros. The number of twos became the number of ones. That's all cool. That's all fine and dandy. Um, that doesn't quite work for going to the next rounds. The number of twos, the number of ones is the same as the number of twos. That's all good. The number of twos is the number of threes. And um, the number of zeros is the number of ones. That's fine. The problem is the number of, we get, we get a six in here and we get an eight and that generated from the zeros. And so uh, what we actually have to think about here is the sixes and eights are the number of zeros from the previous round plus the number of sevens because we'll eventually have sevens in here. Uh, oh, <laughs> my, my iteration goops a little bit here because it's not supposed to actually eliminate sevens. So this is supposed to be a seven here. So this is this is not perfect, but. It's a, <laughs> it worked for the first couple, but not, not after this. So this is supposed to be a seven. Um, so the number of sixes is the number of sevens plus the number of zeros. So ignore all this. I got too cutesy with this. <laughs> so I could probably fix it by doing if n is less than seven, but 
whatever. We don't have to we don't have to worry about this because this isn't our solution anyway. Anyway, the, the thought here is that we need, just need to keep track of the counts of the numbers, and the sixes and eights are specialized based on zero. Everything else is just a subtraction. So let's let's try and code that up and show you how this works. So uh, we are going to be using a counter again. <laughs> uh, so if you watched the last video, we also used a counter for that, and I have an, I have a video on counters, so I'll link that in the description. I guess the description is going to be spoilers, but such is life, I guess. Uh, so we can do numbers equals collections dot counter, and then we need to parse this. Just do int s for s in input s dot strip dot split on a comma. Strip to get rid of the white space, split on a comma to get ourselves a comma. So this will give us our counter. If we run this now, pi. Uh, you'll see that there are two threes, one four, one one, and one two. That's all great. And uh, now we need to loop over the number of days for this in range 80, which is our day one days. We need to make a new set of numbers. Um, and so the way that I thought about this is number two, we're gonna make a separate counter. And this is just going to be the, uh, we, we're just gonna special case the zeros here. So we're gonna um, get our six and our eight. We know the number of sixes is the same as the number of zeros from the previous one and the number of eights from the previous one. We're gonna do six is number zero and eight is number zero. Uh, but we also need to add in the sevens to get the sixes properly. So we need to do a little bit more work here. Uh, but fortunately, we can do that by doing numbers two dot update, and we are just going to subtract one from the previous one. So we're just going to do k minus one to v for k v in numbers dot items. So basically, looping over all of the previous numbers, subtracting one, and we're only going to do that when k is not zero, if k is greater than zero. And so this should update. This should subtract one from all the previous values getting us our little, our little thing there. Uh, we could also write this as a loop. Let's actually write this as a loop because I think it's gonna be easier to, to read and less, less magical. 4K V in, in numbers.items. And this is basically what update is doing behind the scenes. If K is greater than zero, then numbers to K minus one plus equals V. So we're, we're adding V to whatever the less number is. So if K is seven here, uh, then we're adding to this six number here, basically just to make sure that we have that working. Uh, this line is actually the same as that, so I'm just going to comment this out here. Comment. And then after we've computed the right value, we just need to reset numbers to numbers two, just basically discarding the previous one. And at the end, we just need to sum up all of the counts. The counts of our counter is the values, so print sum of numbers dot values and if we run this now uh, after i fix the syntax error uh let's run it with pi pi three it's going to tell me much better parenthesis is never closed brought a parenthesis there uh, is that the number we expect five nine three four yep so that's part one and then this makes part two really easy to update we just change this to 256 and we get part two, which is two, six, nine. Yeah, that's that that big 26 billion number. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically how I reasoned about this. There is another solution to this. Actually, I've seen two other solutions. One is a matrix multiplication, which I, I'm not even gonna try to understand. Uh, <laughs> they basically had this big old matrix and you can just multiply it and it's you know, basically an instant solution. Uh, there's also another solution which uses a recurrence relation. Uh, I don't know the specifics of the recurrence relation, but at a certain point, you can compute the number of things at that step based on two previous steps. I believe it's seven back and nine back, but don't quote me on that. I didn't actually implement that solution. Um, but there, there are a couple other ways to solve this. But this is a linear solution based on the number of days, because this is a constant amount of work and this is a constant amount of work. This is bound, though it's a loop, it's bounded by eight because there's only ever eight keys in this dictionary. Um, but yeah, that's, that's this. <laughs>
<laughs> it actually took me a very long time to come to the counter solution, so I don't feel bad about not getting it. I didn't get it initially either. It took me almost almost 40 minutes to figure that out. But anyway, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next day.